Steve Leisman just touching down in Jackson Hole ahead of this big event. He joins us now on the phone. Steve, I'm glad you're able to join us. I think the big question is how dovish is the Fed chair going to be? I think that's what market participants want to know. And will he be as dovish this time as he was hawkish in August of 2022 when the stock market fell out of bed after eight minutes of pain? Hey, uh, Scott, it's good to be here. Listen, um, I, I don't think I would expect that. The way I like to think about the last three years is as follows. In 2022, he was unconditionally hawkish. And if you think about where they were at the time, they were not quite in the middle of a 525 basis point increase in the funds rate. They had done 225. They would go on after the 2022 Jackson Hole uh, speech to do another 300. He was very clear of being unconditionally hawkish. Came back in 23, and I would say he was conditionally hawkish, and that launched the higher for longer uh, period, which brings us pretty much to today, where the Fed has been uh, since July of 23 at that 538, if you'll call it, uh, funds rate. I expect uh, on Friday the chair will be conditionally dovish, and by that I mean we're going to cut rates, but the pace is unclear. It will be determined by the data by the data and the outlook uh, and the way the data changes the outlook. I would look for a phrase, if you're looking for something for your bingo card, Scott, put in the bingo card the idea that the Fed is well positioned to respond to weakness in the labor market or weakness in the economy. That is kind of like the Fed saying, if the economy weakens fast, we will respond in a quick way. If it weakens slowly or if it stays about the same, we will come down relatively slowly. Uh, right. Listen to talk about the Fed guarding against an increase in the real rate, that is not adjusting the funds rate for a decline in inflation. That gives him scope to cut almost no matter what the data. But you have to remember there is a bunch of data before the next meeting, so it's going to be conditionally dovish based upon what we know today, I would say. Sounds like you're saying if, if we're looking for a, a road map on how far and how fast they're willing to go. Uh, we may not get that, but you do note the Fed funds rate's the highest it's been in 20 years. And if you take the delta between the Fed funds rate relative to the PCE, I'd gather it's about the same uh, amount of time that it's been that much of a, a spread between the two. I mean, there is some urgency here, is there not? There is, and that's why there is a good case. And uh, Joe Lavornia, uh, who I follow closely, just wrote an interesting piece on this calling for essentially a down payment. In other words, if you take that idea of the Fed being well positioned to respond to economic weakness, well, you're pretty tight relative to what you think neutral to be. So he says, take a big step forward towards that neutral rate. And look, if the economy doesn't weaken or you don't, you don't have to go in November. So he says do a 50 basis point down payment in September. I would say, Scott, we have a bunch of really good interviews coming uh, in addition to the chair's speech, obviously, which we'll cover and carry. But I would listen to the committee members who we have. We have Parker, we have Bostic, we have Goolsby. Listen to what their reaction functions and this idea of a down payment of 50. Now, remember, the market's priced for about 100 this year, 200 next year. Uh, two, sorry, 200 between now and, and, and a year from now. So, you know, the story, the, the, the phrase goes, what goes up must come down. But neither, we don't know anything about the pace of that. We knew they went up fast. I suspect they're going to come down more slowly because they don't have as far to go. And if you do buy the soft landing scenario, Scott, I would suggest they would come down more slowly than they went up. Yeah. I mean, gravity doesn't usually factor into Fed decision making, I guess, though. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Steve, um, go get them. We'll, uh, we'll be hearing a lot from you over the next few days, and we look forward to that. That's our Steve Leisman. Thanks, Just touching Scott. down in Jackson Hole. Up next, Mike Santoli standing by with his midday word. We'll do it next. We're back. Our senior markets commentator, Mike Santoli, has just sat down at Post 9 for his midday word. I guess the question is going to be, what is good enough from Jackson Hole for this market? Yeah, um, I would say good enough is we are starting a process. Um, I don't think a promise of, of 50 basis points is likely in the cards or necessary for the market to absorb it and, and deal with it pretty well. Um, 
I mean, I guess it depends on what the, the actual market field position is going in. I think, you know, today you have this low volume digestion type day after eight straight days higher. That's probably good. You want to cool the market off and go neutral uh, rather than kind of go in there guns blazing when uh, and, and raise the stakes for Powell. So I think it's OK. The bond market really is saying Fed's got to get moving. You look at the two year again, mm -hmm. you know, just really testing the lows um, almost uh, of a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, I think you need to have a sense out there that they have a, a plan. It's not just data dependency as far as the eye can see. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't want, I mean, spreads are wide, a, widened a little just bit, a right? You, yeah. you don't want them to, to widen further. And I just wonder whether the Fed chair is going to give us really anything substantive on how far and how fast yeah. they're going to move and whether that, in fact, is good enough if he doesn't. He might make some uh, nods in the direction of where they think the neutral rate sits. They'll probably just say it's a lot lower than where we are right now, which can, I guess, allow you to triangulate you know, how far they might go and, and what distance they think they need to travel. Um, you know, right, I think the bottom line is if they're going to be easing into an economy that remains resilient, great. If you start getting more numbers that say, guess what, late cycle is looking like late cycle, you lose your patience. Or market loses its patience with, uh, with a slower process. And they start to look like they're too tight for too long. Well, they also don't want to be, you know, forced, forced um, to do something by moving yeah. the credit markets. That, that's not a good no, scenario, sure. right? The, 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 the objective all along has been these are kind of insurance normalization yeah. cuts they're not emergency absolutely you don't want the and the credit markets really aren't flaring up what's going no, on no, is of course. treasury yields are going down and credit uh, and corporate yields are not going down as much so i mean that's not really a, an emergency signal i'll see you on closing bell